Hey, this is Dave with Taboo Customs. This video today, we're gonna to be installing our Taboo Customs center section rust repair kit in this 89YJ behind me. This kit will apply to your 87 to 95 Jeep Wrangler YJs. Uh, we do have a kit for TJs as well, but that's gonna be a different video. We'll have a link to that in the description below if you're looking for that. But let's get started taking a look at what we've got. All right, so there's gonna be two main reasons why you're looking at this kit. Uh, one, your frame is gonna rust it out, obviously, in the center section. Or two, you've got a situation like ours where the bolts for the transfer case skid plate, you know, and we didn't do this on this side. Someone actually repaired this by just threading a couple of bolts at the front and rear through the what was left of the frame, which is not great because it's very thin. But the bolts on the left side are still there because they pulled through the transfer case skid plate. Then on the right side, you know, the front and the rear one pulled out, but the center one broke off. So essentially the nuts up in the frame and this one here actually is not even connected anywhere anymore up in there. So, you know, the reason we're installing this kit is really to uh, get good transfer case mounting back and uh, get this solid again. So let's take a quick look at the transfer case skid plate and talk about that. Okay, so here's actually the skid plate that came off of it. This is the one we're gonna use and we'll explain why. Uh, now when you're pulling these skid plates off, you wanna take a look at them and look at this area here. And if you look closely there, you can see there's a huge rust hole there. It's rusted through there. Uh, this actually, yeah, I think is one of the bolts that was messed up. This one had pulled through as well. Also, you can see that the center section where there's multiple layers um, has completely rusted out. So we don't recommend fixing or uh, these transfer case skid plates for the YJs. We do have some kits for TJs, but not for the YJs. You can purchase a new skid plate. We'll put a link uh, to those skid plates in the description of the video, uh, or you could find a used one, which is basically what we did. So, you know, here essentially still a little bit rusty, but all surface rust. You can see here how much better the holes are of this versus that so uh, make sure you get a good skid plate don't go doing something like what they did and just adding some bolts into the frame that's a bad idea all right so in preparation of what you've got to do of course the first thing i do is you know what pulled out the uh, transmission the skid plate um hopefully the bolts come out for you but chances are they will not we will we'll get to dealing with all of that later on in this video but we're going to talk about a couple of other things right now um on the passenger side really there's not much that you have to deal with it's pretty clean over there on the driver's side though you have a few things that you have to deal with uh, you'll have to decide if you still have your parking brake you'll have to decide what you want to do with that uh, a lot of them don't work anymore so Potentially you could just cut it off and forget about it and live happily ever after because uh, most of them don't get used. This one, however, though, the looks like the left tire works. The right side does not look like it works. It's bound up somewhere. I don't know if this guy uses it or not. Since it is here, we're going to go ahead and actually um, undo this here and pull the main parking brake cable out of the frame and then fish it back through when we're done and rehook it up. Now, if you are going to do that, if you are going to redo that, uh, you are going to have to deal with this bracket here. Either way, you're going to have to deal with this bracket. You're either going to have to cut it off and just, you know, pitch it and not worry about it, or you're going to have to cut it off and then put it back on. If you are going to cut it off and put it back on, we do recommend that you take a measurement off of the bracket back here that holds the two parking brakes for each of the tires to the face of the bracket so you can get it back in roughly the right spot. And then once you get that, you can go ahead and take it apart and get it cut off. Now, the other thing you have to deal with on this side is all the brake lines, all the fuel lines. Um, obviously, before you get started cutting on anything, make sure that um, you, know, you have no fuel leaks anywhere. You don't want to have a real bad day uh, in that. Um, you know, you do want to make sure you're safe with that. Um, these are typically pretty good because they've got hard lines that run from front to rear, but if someone has replaced it with soft lines, I would be a little bit 
concerned. Anyway, um, go and pull these off of all these little clips from front to rear because you're going to want to get all these brake lines and the fuel lines pulled over to the center Jeep as much as possible, give you enough room to get that done. And then these couple of clips here in the center will have to come out so you can have room to go in there and install that kit. Now, as I mentioned for these here, we're gonna deal with a little bit later in this video, but for now, let's get to starting to get this stuff removed. Now the next step before we go and we cut these out of the bottom is we're actually going to take a scribe and we are going to mark where these are at. Now your Jeep may not, um, you, you, these might be gone if they are gone. Uh, what we would recommend then is whenever you go to assemble your inner and uh, bottom plates to the frame, use your skid plate as a template. Hopefully it's good enough. If not, get a new one, use that new one as a template. The main thing is you want your mounting holes in the frame and uh, the mounting holes on your transfer case mount to obviously line up. That's probably the biggest thing. But since we do have some, uh, well, all of our bolt holes are still here, we can mark out where they were at. And since we are doing a 4.0 swap out of a Cherokee with an AW4, we've got to come up with some relatively custom mounting anyway so not going to be a massive problem for us because we're going to have to figure it out anyway once you've got those marked out you can go in and cut these bolts out uh, make sure you cut large enough to fit the new nut in there um, you can do that in multiple ways you could use a hard wheel um, we are going to go in and actually plasma cut this area out here and then we will take a look at putting the nuts on the new parts. All right, to see what one of these looks like that's actually when it's you know up in the frame what happens is you know this threads up here just get all rusted up you try to pull it out and it breaks this nut loose and that's probably just resistance welded into the frame um, definitely what we recommend now is going in and trying to clear out as much of the crud that's inside of your frame as possible both front and rear so we'll get in there we'll scrape it out We'll blow it out, try to get as much as that loosened up, take a hammer, beat on the side of it. Um, the more stuff that's inside the frame, the faster it's going to rust out because the more moisture it's going to hold in there and um, you know, the more and quicker you're going to have issues potentially again. So anyway, now we'll move on to putting the nuts on the new pieces. So just to add to the list of things to watch out for, if you live in an area with a lot of mice, you might have bunch of nuts up in the frame which 
we caught on fire plasma cutting so yeah watch out for that okay so this step is pretty simple but very important now when you get your new parts they're going to be etched with p and a d next to the holes there'll be three marked d three marked p make sure that you install on one of them all of the nuts in the d and on the other one all of the nuts in the p that way that you get a passenger and a driver side uh, version of this assembly once we get the nut in there we'll just use a half inch bolt to hold it in and we will pretty much weld that nut all the way around to make sure that it doesn't break off in the future uh, once we get done with uh, doing that welding we let it cool down a little bit what we're going to do then is we will use a weld through primer a zinc based weld through primer we use sem and we'll put a link in the description of this video if you wish to purchase some of this we're going to coat the inside of this uh, piece here trying not to necessarily get too much on these outer edges that we are going to weld even though it says weld through uh, you don't want to actually try to weld through it it's not really made that way resistance welding i believe you can weld through it but not for mig welding necessarily uh, however it will withhold with you know hold up to the heat and whatnot that we're going to put into it and it's about the best thing you can do to try to prevent rust we're also going to do that on the frame we'll probably talk about that a little bit when we get over to it but for now we've got to get these welded up and then we'll clean up the frame a little bit more when you go to seat these nuts down make sure that you put it with the round section down in that hole that's what it's meant for to locate it and then make sure you put a little bit of torque on this bolt so you'll hold it in there straight so when you weld it it doesn't want to go cockeyed on you All right, so now we need to start cleaning up the frame. So we've got the inner driver's side piece, which is the, the form piece, obviously. Kind of figure that out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this up here. We're roughly gonna line it up with our marks from before, and then we're gonna go ahead and mark out where this piece is with a piece of chalk, or we've got a scribe here. Now we know where to go in and clean up the frame. That's the biggest part of this whole thing is getting this frame as clean as possible will definitely help you weld it. Now, since we're not dealing with a real rusty frame, which is a big benefit to us, um, it won't be too bad for us. But if we're dealing with a really rusty frame, what we will usually start with is a needle scaler, which looks like this if you haven't seen a needle scaler before so we'll go in we'll needle scale the frame take a lot of that scale off all the big chunks and then we'll go in and we will grind that area we will then also go ahead and coat anything that's uh kind of within that perimeter with that zinc uh based weld through primer then we may even go back and touch it up again just to make sure we've got good metal to weld to but we'll also since this frame has a good bottom section, we'll go ahead and we'll clean up some of this bottom edge because what I'm gonna wanna do is actually clamp this inside piece up in here and weld this bottom edge first and then go in and weld the others. A lot of times, if you've got a Jeep that's really rusted, this bottom might be completely gone. Unfortunately, we won't be able to do that on those, but on this one, since it is good, we're gonna go ahead, put some weld in there as well, really just to hold that piece up in there just right. So for the worst part of this whole project, we'll get started with the cleaning. All right, so with the inside pretty much cleaned up, we're gonna do the outside plate now. The outside plate, what we'll do is we'll put it up here. We'll pretty much center it roughly on the uh, body mount. It's pretty uh, simple. Now, um, one thing I failed to mention, if you do have one of our older kits and you are going to use your 
uh, parking brake line, you will have to cut these holes here. So just put them up there, mark where you want to cut them, use a hole saw. Um, future kits from us will actually have those holes in them. Uh, unfortunately, currently we, we do not. So we'll go in here again, mark out where we're at. Now, this body mount is a debate. Now, we left this enough room to get up there, clean it up, and hopefully get a weld up there. You can try to remove this bolt. Chances are, nine times out of 10, you go to remove that bolt, and it's not gonna come out clean. And uh, you, know, you may have some fun with that then, trying to also repair that. So now that we've got that marked out, we'll go again, clean up all the areas that we're gonna weld and we're gonna solid weld everything we can. And then we will go ahead, put a coat of primer on here. We'll let that primer dry, then we'll actually do the same thing. Go in there, mark it out again, then we'll take our small die grinder and we'll just do the area, you know, within a quarter inch of, of the edge where we're going to weld on the inside. Try to leave as much paint in there as we can. We'll also go in and paint the back side of this outer plate before we weld it in there. But for now, we got to get to clean up the rest of this frame. The last tool we're going to use for cleanup here is going to be our little straight die grinder with a bourbon on it because we've got to get around this body mount a bit more. Now, in the end, we're going to take these plates, actually go over the body mount like that. That's how we get away from having to remove this body mount and put a flat plate on there. Uh, so we'll use this bourbon, clean up the corners of this body mount quite a bit uh, because we want to make sure we get a good weld from this plate to both sides of this body mount as well as to the rest of the rest of the frame that is here as well. Something important I probably should have mentioned before I uh, got to painting this side is if you have marks make sure that you do something to make them maybe a little bit more permanent. Uh, now, since ours were scribes, we could still see ours, but if you used a marker or chalk or something like that, and you painted over it, you're probably not gonna see it anymore. So you won't have that second uh, check, especially if you're doing something like us where we're not gonna be able to really use the transmission mount to locate the skid plate. Uh, we really need these marks to make sure we try to get it right back in the same spot. But that's basically gonna be the next step is getting that plate up in there and using that skid plate to basically set both inner plates. So let's get started doing that. We're ready to start installing the inner and bottom plates. So we have uh, attached the both the passenger and driver side plates to the skid plate here. Uh, we've raised it up to the vehicle and we're gonna get it up and line it up using the skid plate as sort of a template because obviously you want to bolt back together. So. Uh, we'll use that skid plate as a template. We will normally also use the transmission mount and try to get it, because usually you can see where the transmission was mounted, try to get it roughly in the same location. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll use the skid plate to kind of force it up against the frame. And then we'll use some clamps to pull our plate over against the frame on the inside and then we will go ahead and we'll tack the inside here at the top and then what we'll do um, back here at least on the back sometimes you can get up here in the front if you have a body lift but on this you don't um, we'll actually push this up against the frame at the bottom make sure we're flat up against the frame and then we'll also put a tack weld inside of here to get it uh, make sure it stays up against the frame now up here what we'll do is once we get the inside tacked on and the back tacked on we'll actually use our jack here to push this up um, actually it looks pretty well flush so we probably won't even have to do this but if we had a little bit of a gap there we'd use that jack to close that up uh, and get it tacked 
All right, so now we're ready to weld. So uh, just make sure you've got your alignment good before you start welding. We actually had to go back on this other side. And since the frame wasn't rusted out, we just cut the bolt hole out. We actually had to cut a little bit more out on the, uh, the passenger side just to make sure we had enough clearance there so everything fit correctly. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're gonna put a weld on this corner back here at the back. We're gonna, go, we're gonna do the same thing on the front. Then we're gonna go ahead and clamp this here at the back, put a weld across the back. We'll go and we'll either clamp or try to push up or see if it's good. If it's good at the front, we'll go ahead and weld that at the front. We'll do that on both sides, passenger side and the driver side. And then we can go ahead and remove the skid plate and we'll be back and we'll talk a little bit more about the welding after that. All right, before we get started into the welding, let's talk a little bit about what you might need because we get a lot of questions about welding these kits sometimes. Now, this kit is seven gauge, so it's about 3 16 thick. It's a lot thicker than what the frame was. And the reason that we've made that uh, seven gauge is that this is the center section of the Jeep. And what we typically tell people is that you're going to do multiple kits do the center section first because it's going to kind of be the the center of everything obviously um, and it needs to really probably be the strongest especially between the front and rear suspension as you're going to get you know twisting wanting to happen in your frame and we're going to need to resist that so with this since it is seven gauge we do highly recommend that you use a 220 welder not that it's not possible with the 110 welder but honestly I wouldn't do it with a 110 welder. I'd get a 220 welder working if I needed to for some reason uh, to make that happen. Now, uh, also, if you are not experienced at welding, we don't recommend uh, you doing this uh, installation. Uh, this needs to be done by an experienced uh, welder who can uh, weld in a well manner, I guess. Um, it needs to be good. I mean, you're talking about something you're going to be driving on the road, putting yourself and putting others at risk. So make sure whatever you're doing, you get a qualified welder, know what you're doing, you know, follow the safety procedures, blah, 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 all that good stuff. Don't get yourself hurt. Don't hurt someone else. Anyway, let's get back to welding. Alright, so we've got the pieces all tacked into place. We're basically welding it, you know, small welds holding them in place and they aren't going to go anywhere. Um, one thing to note is sometimes back here, some of these joints, if you look at them, if you've got an open area, you may want to look, you know, before you weld this up and make sure that all of your gaps are good. Our gaps were actually were good. We're just closing up a small, small gap right there, and that's just due to it's formed a little bit open, um, which is what we want versus closed because it's a lot easier to do that than to try to open it up. Uh, however, you may also make sure your frame doesn't have any slag or spatter or uh, wires, you know, left over from the welding of something on the frame. Actually, on the passenger side, we had one of those that's holding it off, a, a wire thickness essentially uh, that we had to pull off of the frame. So uh, we'll close up all of those gaps now and uh, we will now work on our outer plate once we get these bottom pieces solid welded. Now for the outer pieces, pretty self-explanatory. It's going to go around the body mount as such. Um, you may have some misalignment between the outer piece and the inner piece on the ends. Not a huge deal. A lot of it's really going to depend on where things fell with your Jeep and how things fell out. Um, with this up here, you know, you've got a couple of options with these. You could weld this all up and then put this over this. Um, if you do that, chances are you're gonna have to take a hammer and, you know, close up any gaps. The biggest thing with all of this is making sure there's no gaps. Uh, your other option, you know, we do recommend at least going in and welding 
um, this inside before putting these in. Uh, but if you do put them in before, depending on how good you are, you may have to do a little bit grinding on the bottom here to get that. We got ours really close flush up to the bottom of the frame. So um, and this body mount, you know, maybe a little bit low, who knows? Uh, hard telling with the variation that you might see. But uh, anyway, do what you have to do. The main thing is getting those in there, closing up all the gaps, getting them solid welded. But like we said, we do recommend welding if you can. All of this first, getting as much weld on there as possible. You want it as strong as possible when you're done. But basically, get it up in there, get everything solid welded, and then we can go ahead and prime and paint it. All right, so that is going to do it for the installation of this kit. Now we get asked a lot about coatings for uh, once you get these installed. Now there's a few things we do recommend. Now, if you had anywhere where perhaps you couldn't weld or you left a gap and you saw us perhaps in the video take and close up a couple of gaps up here at the top of those little spacers that go around, you know, try to close up all those gaps. You don't want to leave any holes. You want a solid weld all the way around the kit. But let's say, for instance, up here where you've got this hole, you're not able to necessarily weld that up. We do recommend maybe using some RTV, caulking, something to close that up. You don't want, you want to try to keep water from getting in between those panels because getting things in between those panels will be uh, detrimental for the long-term uh, longevity of uh, a fix like this. You want it to last uh, as long as possible. So anyway, now if you are looking at coating this, so obviously we're going to go in and coat it. Uh, what we typically do those, we just do a straight spray prime uh, primer coat. We'll do that pretty thick. You want it thick uh, you want the mills on there to try to keep uh, the rust from occurring and then we will do a spray top coat. We don't do undercoating or any kind of wax coating or anything like that. Um, honestly, the frame inside, you, you're already there. You're not going to get the benefit necessarily out of it. And uh, in some of those, it, it is more detrimental than to us than beneficial. So now if you're looking for one of these kits, you can uh, find a link on the description of this video or you can go to our website, tabucustoms.com. We'll also put some links to some other uh, option, other items like the uh, weld through primer that we use. We'll also link to you know a set of the coned bolts that we sell and we will put a link in there for the new skid plates as well. So check that out in the description. And as always, thanks for watching. A like or subscribe is greatly appreciated.